I took the V100 on a test ride recently and I haven't stopped thinking about it. Why? That motor. This motor leaves an impression on you. I'll go as far to say that this is one of the most interesting and fun motors that you can find on the motorcycle market right now. It's that good. So stick around and I'll give you my thoughts on why I think Moto Guzzi is crushing it right now. We'll take the bike for a test ride and then I'll give you my thoughts on who I think this bike is for. But first, I'd like to thank CTX Motorworks San Antonio for hosting a great ride event which enabled me to have some time with this bike. And to be clear, they didn't ask me to review the bike or even visit the dealership. I just popped in, jumped in on a whim, and had an absolute blast. The team there was terrific, their showroom was a pleasure to visit. Please go check them out and like and subscribe to this channel. To understand this bike, we've got to embark on a journey into the fascinating history of Moto Guzzi, a truly legendary motorcycle manufacturer. Listen, this isn't meant to be a history lesson, but the context of the company helps to understand why this bike is perhaps even better than you imagine. We'll explore their legacy of innovation and discover how the new V100 Mandelo and its groundbreaking engine design represents a giant leap forward in creating an engine with unparalleled character. Let's dive in. Established in 1921, Moto Guzzi has stood the test of time as a pioneer in motorcycle engineering. The company was established by partners Emmanuel Vittorio Parodi, a high profile ship owner, his son Giorgio and Giorgio's friend and ex-fellow Italian naval aviator Carlo Guzzi. This intersection with Italian military aviation history is really where my own love of motorcycles and my experience working with the Italian Air Force converge. As I mentioned, the founders, Carlo Guzzi, I believe was a former mechanic in the Italian Royal Navy Aviation Force and Parodi, a former Italian military aviator, were both motorcycle enthusiasts. So much that Carlo Guzzi and his business partner based the Moto Guzzi logo on the Italian Royal Military Aviation emblem of World War I, which became the emblem of the Italian Air Force going forward. I mention this because in the early 20 10s, I was assigned to the Italian air staff in Rome where I served as an exchange officer. During that assignment, I gained a great appreciation for the heritage of the Italian Air Force and I made many long-lasting friendships with our Italian Air Force allies. This heritage and service-oriented brotherhood was rooted in the establishment of Moto Guzzi. But wait, there's more. The Moto Guzzi military aviation branding was a memorial to Guzzi and Parodi's friend Giovanni Ravelli. Ravelli, Guzzi, and Parodi were all motorcycle enthusiasts and they agreed that they would create a motorcycle company at the end of the war. Ravelli was also a pilot. He was known as the Diavolo Italiano or Italian Devil due to his daredevil approach to aviation. It was no surprise that he would end up being a highly decorated war pilot and a much respected test pilot. Sadly, he lost his life on August 1919 when he was on a test flight mission in the Italian Newport Machi 11 as he returned to the San Nicoletta Air Base in Venice. In memory of their brother in arms, Ravelli, Moto Guzzi's iconic brand was born. I mention this again, not because this is a history lesson in Moto Guzzi, but to underline the motivation for this company. This was a company built by war veterans, patriots, motorcycle enthusiasts, and friends. Sometimes Italian bikes get criticized by American consumers as being passion over quality. I would argue that Guzzi had both. For many years, Guzzi's built a great reputation. By 1934, Guzzi was the largest motorcycle manufacturer in Italy. In 1965, they developed the longitudinal 90 degree V-twin. This engine design is really what captured my eye about the bike. Some argue that after the launch of the 90 degree V-twin, the company leaned on this design at the expense of new development. Perhaps. It's important to note that with this design, Moto Guzzi broke into the American market, leaving an indelible mark on the history of highway patrol motorcycles in the United States. The brand's commitment to performance, reliability, and iconic style made Moto Guzzi motorcycles a popular choice among law enforcement agencies, notably, believe it or not, the California Highway Patrol. But more on this on a future video. The bottom line is that the company made a huge impression with their machines into the late 1970s. This is where I entered the world. I was born in Naples, Italy in 1976. In my lifetime, the Italian bikes that entered into my consciousness and attention were Ducatis, Kajivas, and Aprilias. I can't recall Moto Guzzi motorcycles resonating with the younger version of me or with American motorcycle zeitgeist much during that period. 
This was a time, if you can remember, when the Japanese top speed wars were in full swing and Harley was building back their reputation after the AMF years. Let's let that soak in for a moment. Kutsi was not able to rise above that noise. They didn't get my attention again until the V85 TT, which I could not wait to ride. I finally had a chance to test one in 2021 and honestly was fairly disappointed by the lack of character the engine presented. I ended up buying a BMW A50 GS instead. But then recently, it was time to witness Moto Guzzi's latest triumph, the V100 Mondello. At the heart of this remarkable motorcycle lies an engine that I'd argue represents a revolutionary leap forward in the pursuit of creating an engine with tons of character. As I mentioned, I had a chance to ride it recently, and here was my impression. V100 Mandelo. First ride, not sure I like this little orange stripe. Let's see, the guy that rid it before me said it was just okay. Let's see, what, see how this goes. I've ridden the 85s and didn't really like them all that much. I like the way that felt, the motor. Here we go. That felt pretty good. It's got some pep to it, man. I don't know what that guy's talking about. The guy who uh, test rode this before me uh, said he really didn't like it as much as his uh, BMW, but holy crap, so far I really like it. Just right out of the uh, just right out of the uh, parking lot. Pretty cool. Holy crap, I really like this a lot. Stops really awesomely. It's got just enough sport um, and just enough touring, but it has. It probably leans more on the sport side. Wow! No, dude, this is not. This is not a boring bike. Don't do it, man. This is. Uh, this is great. I gotta get used to the turn signals not auto uh, shutting off, though. Holy crap, I like this. Oh, whoa, 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 gave me a little wiggle there. <laughs> Accelerating out of that turn. I don't know what that was about. But pretty planted. A lot of people trying to pull up in front of me today. Of course, I'm going pretty quick on a slow road. Dude, I like this, man. This is fun. No auto blip from what I can, uh, unless it's just not on, which would make it even more fun. Um, dude, that was, uh, that was awesome. Holy crap. I wasn't expecting that. So I've ridden other Moto Guzzi's and to be honest with you, they were boring and lacking character and did not make me smile. This thing is, uh, this thing is great. I had it in regular road mode. Problem is, I don't know how to change the setting and I don't really want to mess with it too much. But I imagine if you could get this thing, like, into its more sporty mode, it would be even more peppy. It sounds amazing. Wow. I really dig this. I was really kind of more uh, wanting to ride the, the greener uh, livery, the green livery that they've got. Uh, this is the red. It's kind of their more basic model, a little less expensive, but it actually looks pretty good, to be honest with you. Wow, man. Yeah, this going to get up and go. This has got it. Woo! Nice. I'm in like second gear. This thing's ripping. Ripping for as good as a relatively big bike can do. Holy cow. I like this thing. Got to get around this bus. Six thousand RPM, man. This five six thousand RPM. It lights up. I'm gonna take one more loop around. This thing is terrific. I like this uh, kind of minimalistic display here. 
it's good enough i mean it looks nice i'm gonna go catch up to some of these dudes um Terrific. I love it. Holy mackerel. Man, that is fun, dude. I love I'm already I'm in love with this bike, man. You know it when you get on a bike. You know it quick. You know it if it's gonna make you smile, if it fits your body right, uh, if it's got the right you know that engine character. This has got all of it. And I would say that was the one thing about Moto Guzzi's that I really wasn't sure about was that engine character. This man. It, <laughs> I'm gonna try to be nicer on these dudes though. But man, does it feel good. I, I, I'm sold. I like it. I want one. Holy crap, how do I get one? I need one in Riddler green. I'm not sure about this red, but to be honest with you, I could be sold. And I think I'm gonna piss my wife off because I'm gonna be like, I, I need this bike. Woo Yeehaw. That is a lot of fun. Holy crap, I like this bike. And I like the way it feels on, you know, like even riding it. It's like some some of a, uh, a split difference between a little bit sporty. You're not, you're, you know, you got a lightly upright position, but you know, kind of when you look at it from the top down, it, it looks like a sport bike. You're just not on top of it, right? And you're, you know, usually the, the difference between one of these and like a sport bike is the gas tank is wrapped above your legs and um, this one is obviously a little bit forward it's a lot longer i don't think this is a wheelie bike though i really would love to see somebody try to wheelie one because that's still on my bucket list but i i don't know it's got wheelie vibes i'll tell you that it feels good man i really dig this i want one and i think this may turn into my commuter but you know my wife's gonna tell me you gotta, you gotta sacrifice one of the lambs before you can bring another lamb in. So, <laughs> I gotta figure out which one's my sacrificial lamb or if there's a way I can convince her that, um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's not like these are investments, right? They're liabilities. But now I'm, my, my brain is racing. Like, how do I get this kind of fun in my garage that's already got three bikes in it? Oh man. I'm digging this thing. It's about as sport bike as you can get without going sport bike, but it's not touring nerd, to totally touring nerdy, I guess, or tour bike dad nerdy. Holy shit, I love that. Excuse my language. I love that, that sound. And I wonder if you like put a different muffler on it, if that would even change. Man, that is fun. That is fun. I might do a victory lap because that was so much fun. See, I want to ride it so much. Two laps <laughs> and then I ride around the... Uh... But I love it. This thing is terrific. Definitely you could flick it around too. Low speed maneuvers. Digging it, man. Digging it. Digging it. Digging that bike is terrific, man. Let's put this. Back. Ooh, it is a little heavy to back up. Whew. Terrific, though, man. I dig it. That was fun. After riding this bike, I believe the V100 Mondello's engine is a true masterpiece, meticulously designed to deliver power, performance, and an exhilarating riding experience. It combines advanced engineering with Moto Guzzi's rich heritage, creating an engine that I believe will captivate riders on a whole new level. So what sets the V100 Mondello engine apart is its meticulous attention to detail. Moto Guzzi engineers have worked tirelessly to refine every aspect from the fueling system to the exhaust note, ensuring a symphony of performance and character. The result is an engine that not only delivers impressive power, but also possesses a soulful personality. Very important to me. 
that engages the rider's senses like never before. I would argue that the V100 Modelo in Rosso Magma captures the spirit of Gianni Ravelli's call sign, The Italian Devil. It also seems to echo styling cues from Moto Guzzi's Daytona 1000, if you've ever seen those. I also have to mention how the bike feels to ride. There is some heritage here also. Moto Guzzi, located on Lake Como, is also active in designing and building rowing shells. They have been involved with the development of rowing craft since the first canoe was developed by Moto Guzzi in July 1929, which would eventually lead to the development of a rowing club. Believe that or not, according to the Piaggio Group, the rowing club has won 22 European and World Championships, another 80 Italian titles, and 10 Olympic gold medals, plus a silver and five bronze medals. Moto Guzzi explains that they were successful because they designed the rowing shells around the rower. This commitment to ergonomics and athletic commitment is clear when you throw a leg over this bike. The V100 Mondello's engine represents a monumental leap forward for Moto Guzzi's modern motorcycles. It showcases the brand's commitment to innovation and their unwavering dedication to creating motorcycles that are both technically advanced and emotionally captivating. I think this engine serves as a cornerstone of Moto Guzzi's lineup elevating their motorcycles to a whole new level of excellence, and I'm really tempted to open up my wallet and figure out which bike in my garage needs to go to make some room. All right, so who is this bike for other than for me? Let's look at the price. I remember when this bike was being reported maybe a year or so ago, and everyone hoped or wondered perhaps that the price would be under $20,000. This was at the height of the crazy COVID inflation issues and supply shortages. I remember thinking if Moto Guzzi could get it closer to $17,000, I would be ready to buy one in an instant. Now, the baseline V100 comes in at $15,500. This is the one I rode in Rosso Magma. It was practically perfect in every way. I do love the way the bike looks with the Verdi 2121 livery, but that can only be purchased as uh, the V100S. So what do you lose by getting the base model? Well, not a lot. The base model, as tested as I wrote it that day, gives you full LED headlights, quartering ABS, traction control, riding modes, the same full color TFT, adaptive aerodynamics, and electronically adjustable windscreen. That's very impressive, and I would argue competes very well with other luxury tourers in the category. For an additional $2,000, you can get the Mondello S with the option for the gorgeous Verde 2121. But what do you get for an additional $2,000? Well, you get tire pressure monitoring, heated grips, an up-down quick shifter, and Moto Guzzi's multimedia interface technology, which allows you to connect your phone to the bike. But if it is an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, I'm not sure it's worth the hassle. I think the Verde 2121 bike is the best looking one. Guzzi also is releasing the Mondello Aviazione Navale version, which is a clear tribute to Ravelli and the Italian Navy's partnership with the American F-35B fighter jets. These will be serial numbered, limited, and will be equipped with tire pressure monitoring and heated grips. I admit it, this is the version I'd buy and I think Ravelli would approve. The price? 16,900, which slots it right between the base model and the S. I'm opening up my wallet right now if I can find it. So who is this bike for? The bike is being marketed as a sport tour. I think that makes sense, but it might be in a new category. I cut my teeth on sport tours, the BMW R1200RT for example. And I've also ridden big bagger touring bikes, and this seems to be this bike the V100 in an entirely new space. You can clearly tour on the V100. It has all the features you'd need from a more upright riding triangle to luxury features that assist you in eating up these miles. But this bike also has a clear sport bike vibe to it. I'm not sure it's set up for track days, but who knows? I've heard of folks taking their BMW GSs to track days and doing great. From an older rider's perspective and an experienced touring rider, I don't think this is in the same category as the BMW RT1250 or a Honda Goldwing. I see those bikes as perhaps 50-50 sport tours. This is closer to an Aprilia Tuono V4, though I would agree that it doesn't have the same sport bike track DNA that the Aprilia has. I would argue that the V100 might be carving out its own category as something like an 80-20 sport touring bike, where the Aprilia Tuono V4 is more like a 90-10. When you look at the numbers, the V100 weighs 513 pounds and gets 
about 50 miles per the gallon. I felt that weight when trying to back it up in the parking lot. The Aprilia Tuono, on the other hand, weighs 50 pounds less at about 460 pounds, but has been rated at 32.6 miles per gallon. If you're looking for a sport bike like experience that would be very comfortable, blast on a commute, and will also save you money on fuel, give a small nod to the Diavolo Italiano and go check out the V100 Mondello. Hopefully we don't get hit by it. I don't know if he was doing the, there's a cop over there. Cause we were definitely pushing it. 